Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the Battle Cat's Beginner's Guide. This guide is on how to beat Flappy Cat Insane, the crazed bird stage. This guide is one of a series, a long series of guides, and so if you don't have one or more of the things that are listed as prerequisites for this guide, you can go back into the tutorial series, which will be linked in the description, and go from the video that best matches your progress. And hopefully then you can easily and quickly get back to this point with all the stuff that you need. Not that there's only one way to do it in Battle Cats. These tutorials are always the bare minimum way to be able to do it. And the likelihood is if there's something you don't have of what I suggest, there's something you do have that will still make you be able to do it. If you're unsure, just ask. So, you need full superior treasure in Empire of Cats, all of them, and additionally, full relevant treasures. We've got the last two not there because they're not relevant to battling in Into the Future Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 to be on the same plane that this account is. Now, it's important to bear in mind with things like the Into the Future treasures, some of them are geared against types of enemies that don't appear in the level, like aliens. In those cases, getting those treasures won't be important for this level specifically. So have a look at what treasures are in there if you still need to get them, and prioritise the ones that relate to the enemies that are in this level. As this guide is no gacha, not using any units from Rare Cat Capsules, it makes a lot of use of the crazed cats, and so this guide expects you to have, at the original max level of 20, the crazed cat, the crazed tank, the crazed fish, Crazed Sexy Legs Cat, Crazed Dragon, and Crazed Titan. And as for basic true forms, it asks that you have a Razor Cat, mine is 20 plus 10, so exactly on the level of true form, as is Island Cat, as is Macho Leg Cat, and as is Jamira Cat. Now it's important to have these, I found in testing for this stage that having the second forms of these units isn't good enough and they'll just likely not be powerful enough to get you through this stage. If you're worried about the amount of the crazed cats here, or don't have one of those basic true forms, there is another configuration of this strategy that assumes you have beaten the Great Escaper in the Stories of Legend. In the case of doing that, you'd be best to remove the unit that you don't have. I'm going to remove Jamira for this example, and if you have Crazed Sexy Legs Cat, I'd advise keeping that, because what you can do is move these two units up to the top here. This will increase Aruran's power of knockback, which is what it is famed for and useful for in this stage. If you're fortunate enough to have the rare Gacha Cat Fisherman Cat, I'd advise putting that up in a top row that looks exactly as follows. This gives you both a knockback combo and a defense up combo for your units. Then put the Aurorant in the remaining slot. Crazed Titan is our main chipping damage dealer as part of the strategy when it comes to the Crazed Bird, so I'd advise keeping that in. Part of the combo, in fact four out of five of the combo units, are used in the battle as well. So if you happen to have Fisherman Cat, that's a very efficient use of cat combos. However, I will be keeping it to this no gacha version of the strategy to make it as completely accessible as possible. Even without Aruran Cat, Jamira Cat stands to benefit a little bit from using the two legs cats in a combo because it might knock back enemies. But I'm going to be doing it without any combo effects just to provide an even more accessible base level in case you don't have Jamira Cat. That way, hopefully, we won't be relying on it. Now, the way I advise doing this stage is all about patience. The thing is, is that we're not going to be doing opportune damage to the crazed bird whenever we can. It has got so much health that really it's worth chipping it away and just focusing on the other stuff in the battle, because if we deal with that, we will be fine with the crazed bird at all times, and so we will eventually beat it by default. The problem with opportunely hitting it is that you may run out of money spamming stuff and the crazed bird is likely to use its huge amount of attack damage to destroy it all anyway. So we're going to be doing kind of dribs and drabs strategy, but because it takes so long, I would suggest bringing a speed up with you. And if you can possibly spare one, a sniper the cat. I can show you how to do it without one just in case you don't have one, so we will do it without one. 
The speed up obviously isn't going to make you any better at the battle, but I'd certainly recommend it for getting the level over with a bit more quickly. Rich Cat isn't needed because of the startup that we do, and the technique for that starts the moment we get into the level. So immediately put out a crazed cat. Then, when you can afford a worker cat upgrade, bring out a crazed tank. Then, when you can afford the next worker cat upgrade, bring out another crazed tank. And we're going to continue doing this until the worker cat is at level 6. The reason for that is because this provides a kind of nice timing for stalling this crazed bird without spending too much on crazed tanks. So as you can see, the crazed bird is largely stalled here. The reason we stop at level 6 worker cat, both the units and the worker cat upgrading, is because very soon afterwards you will see the appearance of this rain D here, which you then want to let walk all the way towards your base because you want to be luring it doing as much damage to it as possible while the crazed bird isn't hitting you. So meat shields, and then crazed legs, crazed dragon, and crazed titan. And these three units are particularly good because they can do two knockbacks worth of damage to the rain D when they hit it, whereas the other units can't. Rain D gets knocked back so often that you really want to be doing as much damage as possible to it per knockback, otherwise it will keep getting knocked back out of contention behind the crazed bird, and it will stick around for longer. This is why Sniper the Cat is so useful to have. It moves the Crazed Bird back quite often, giving you more of a chance to hit the Rain D. This is the point at which you should then start doing Crazed Tanks all the time. And while you've got the surplus money, I'd recommend getting your Worker Cat up to max while you have this little sort of bit of quietness. As you can see, we're not taking the opportunity to spam stuff at the Crazed Bird. It is all about chipping away. While there's one rain D about, I would recommend putting out the crazed tank constantly and those three units. And that is all you need to do, which is why you can put your speed up on and fairly effectively just continue to do this. Now, when the boar appears, put all your meat shields out and make sure to get both the whales definitely and ideally some of the other units. With the way that you are spamming for just the one rain D, you should have a decent amount of monies left for this exact example. In fact, if you're bringing a ruin with you, you should have enough monies to put that out and then would be a great time. It will have effect against the boar and the rain Ds and should be able to hit all of them if you get lucky with its hit, which should really help. Now, the boar isn't actually too much to be worrying about. If you're constantly getting your whales out, as you can see, you really get enough damage done to deal with it quite easily. And when that's dealt with and two rain Ds are about, I'd recommend putting out both your eraser and your crazed tank and those three units as previously described. And that will help you once again get your monies up. You can occasionally see other units crawling in. That's my own mistake, really, but it isn't too much of a bother if you decide to put out cheaper units like the Macho Legs. Shouldn't have too much of a negative impact on your finances. Of course, if you find yourself struggling, remember to turn the speed up off. This is going to give you greater control over your own army. I said that putting a speed up on won't make you any better. It won't, but it might make you a little bit worse in the sense that any inefficiency in the way you're spamming units is exacerbated by having the battle at double speed. So if you just want to take things a little bit more serenely when there are two rain Ds about, I don't blame you. Right, so a boar's appeared again. I definitely recommend turning the speed up off for that. As you can see, we've got a decent nest egg for monies. I don't know if a ruin would have recharged by this point, but either way, the other units are good enough to be able to deal with a boar. If you're constantly spamming all three of your meat shields, getting your whales out when you can should be fine. You may notice that it's the crazed titan that's getting most of the chip damage off onto the crazed bird, and it especially helps if it manages to do its waves like that. Just to be completely clear, it waving two times in a row like that is extremely unlikely to happen, so don't be disappointed if that doesn't happen for you. But either way, your crazed titan should quite often get to the crazed bird and be doing a little bit of damage onto it. But as I suggested, don't worry about that. Worry about everything except for the crazed bird, and the crazed bird will take care of itself. And there we go, through all that chip damage, the crazed bird has now been destroyed with plenty of monies left in the bank. Remember, it is about dealing with the rain Ds as they appear, and the boars as they appear. If you're struggling with the two rain Ds, you do have enough monies to be able to put all your meat shields out. I'm just talking about the most efficient, reasonably safe way to do it. Do not worry about the crazed bird, and then once the crazed bird is defeated, just keep worrying about the occasional rain Ds and destroy the base, and there you go. Victory! And upon the victory, you will earn yourself Crazed Bird. I have done so myself previously, but let's have a look in the upgrade menu. 
Here it is, the crazed bird. Following much the same ideas as the bird cat. Basically, you'll want to get this one to at least level 10 for the crazed UFO cat. And then the crazed UFO cat, when it's used in strategies, is often used for getting area of effect from a range that's just about large enough. It does a lot of damage as well, so stacked, providing therefore that it can outrange the enemy it's up against, it can be very useful. So that was how to beat Flappy Cat Insane. If you have any questions, queries, or this is not working, please detail your query in as much clarity and explanation as possible, and hopefully I can help you with it. But that'll do it. So I hope this guide has proved useful to you. I bid you goodbye, and I hope you enjoyed.